the Old Testament, all the all the praisers and the choirs and the singers and the musicians work harder than the soldiers. Amen. Amen. They went forth in battle and began to lay the work. And see, Israel was a was a people led by the Spirit of God. Yes. So whatever they could do in the physical, uh, it was only enhanced by the supernatural power Amen. of God. Amen. And, and, and in my book, and what I know, the supernatural power of God is better than my own power. Yes. So when you walk in the Spirit, talk in the Spirit, you live in the Spirit, you talk to the Spirit, you pray in the Spirit, worship in the Spirit. Standing on the walls in the dead, amen. 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 And everything that God is doing in the house, you know, God has order in his house. And he has order in his house so that he may get all the glory. Amen. 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 That we may move in a fashion, amen, that we are in harmony with God. And boy, being on being on point and on key with God leads you to some great opportunities with God. Come on. from the book of Exodus. Then as you turn in your Bible or on your device, in Exodus chapter 14, when you found it, keep it open. Amen. But this text really is from verses 1 to 31. Amen. But I can't read all that to you. Amen. I'm not going to preach it verse by verse, but i got an idea for you today. I got a concept for you today. It's a surprise. Because I didn't even have it by the time they went to print. I didn't even have it by the time he put the bulletin up. I'm sorry, the, um, the boy outside. I got this word late, late in the week. Amen. Right. And I thank God for that. He's always right on time. Yes, Amen. Exodus chapter 14. We can, we can bring our initial attention to verses 1 through 4. Amen. I am, I am so pleased with what God is doing in this place today. Amen. We can only get bragged to all my preacher friends about what a great church I serve. Amen. 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 God is good. Yes. Exodus chapter 14, when you found it, please say amen. Amen. God in the first verse that he reads as follows. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they turn and encamp before Pig Haraf, and between Midol, the sea, over against Baal Zephron, before I shall be encamped by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel that they are entangled in the land, the wilderness has shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after them, and I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. Amen. Amen. The Lord had a blessing to the reading of his holy word sanctified in our hearts and make it good for our soul. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, right now for you, God, and everything that you're doing, God. I thank you, God, that you are showing yourself mighty and marvelous and wonderful in our sight. God, uh, you are doing some things in this place, God. You are opening hearts and minds, free, free people, God, free spirits, God, bolstering, God. You are strengthening us, God. You are healing us, God. You are doing mighty marvelous things in our midst, God, all because the praise is going up and the blessings are coming down. God, I thank you for that. God, we so ever careful to praise you for everything you do, God. But we also want to praise you. Thank you, God, right now because, God, you have looked at this time. Now, God, we pray that you send the type of anointing 
you didn't make to preach it. Now I do pray that you set the type of anointing that we hear your word is. God, we pray that you set the type of anointing that makes doing your word real, 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 real. And now, God, as you go down deep into the well of anointing, bring us up dripping wet that we might be able to get your word from on her to bring something to the people that they can feel. She had no. And God, what your power can let us be your power. Partner with us in the covering of your covenant. Cover us with your precious blood of Jesus. That the devil may know who is beyond. And you're not the messenger. In Jesus' name we do pray. And let the church say amen. 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 Today we are time together in the word of God. I, I, I want to continue in the sermonic series uh, titled Miracles in Your Wilderness. Amen. With today's offering, amen. Uh, um, Entitled In the Right Place for Your Miracle. Amen. You know, we've been dealing with the wilderness experience, amen, of the children of Israel. We have determined and, and we have said that the wilderness, the wilderness, is not an inviting place. It's a place often of hardship, struggles, amen. It's struggles there, it's, it's hard fought victory there, it's, it's uncomfortable there, it's dry and barren. But sometimes the Lord will lead us into a wilderness experience. Last week we preached about guidance for the godly in, in the wilderness. This week that word is put to the test in the lives of the children of Israel in this, in this scripture offering. And just as importantly, I pray that this word is validated even in our own lives. Church, that is a right way and a wrong way to go about seeking your miracle from God. Amen. The wrong way involves selfishness, disobedience, and a lack of trust in the way, the will, and the word of God. And yes, actions do speak louder than words. Amen. The right way to seek the Lord for a miracle is in faith. Is in trust and desire and righteous desire and obedience to the word of God. The right way of seeking your miracle leads to being in the right place for your miracle. Amen. The right place for your miracle is just as much a matter of your location as it is your motivation and your inclination. Amen. Your location must be dictated by the will of God. Your motivation must be to bring glory to the kingdom of God. And your inclination and your mindset, well, it ought to be in complete compliance with the Lord. Church, we got to realize that being in the right place for your miracle is due to the orchestration of God. Our job is only to be yielded vessels unto God to reap the maximum benefits from the leading of God. Church, out yielding to God's leading results in being in the right frame of mind, not only to go get your blessing, but being in the right frame of mind to do it God's way. And to be able to accept the way that God is doing it. God said, my ways are not your ways. My ways are higher than your ways. Sometimes we don't understand God's way, but we just need to no, we need to go God's way. Come on. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. There is a God order and a God ordained process to your miracle. Amen. And with every stage, with every step, not only is God working out your miracle for you, come on. You know when you wake up in the morning, God got your miracle in mind. Amen. With every step, every stage, when you come to church, God has got your miracle in mind. When you come to Bible study, God got your miracle in mind. When you get up and go to work, God got your miracle in mind. And every step, every stage you find, you'll find that not only is God working on your miracle, but God is working on you to come. So that we can be in the right place, not only physically, not only mentally, but spiritually to come. See, we got to understand that being in the right place for your miracle is important, even if that right place just happens to be the wilderness. Amen. Everybody don't want to go to the wilderness. Amen. But sometimes that's the place where you're going to reap the most blessing. Amen. Sometimes it's in the wilderness. You know, in the wilderness, 
way to dry water tastes extra sweet. Amen. And the wilderness, when you can't get the food you want, even peanut butter and jelly taste real good. Come on, tell me, tell me, tell me, Get out of the 
the God of our faith. You need to know that in this life journey, you will need the Lord to show up all the time. And I tell you, if God is not a one trick pony, neither is he a one hit wonder, nor is he a flash in the wind. My God is the greatest God, the greatest source, and in the world of power, like his holy ghost power. But to be able to trust in God sometime, even in spite of what you think, and even in spite of what you see, God has a plan for you to get to the right place for your miracle. And I tell you, I'm going to show you how wrong this place was to the natural eye. No, no military tactician, no leader of people that had the responsibility of all these women and children to protect. And he had to protect them with men that did not know how to fight. He had to protect them with men that had the will to fight. He was systemically all beaten out of their lives through bondage. He had to go and protect them with men that had no weapons. And they had to go up, they had to go up to a place that was really an ambush waiting to happen. They got in, but there was no way out. Because look, little did they know. And even though God, can I tell you something about you? Why you shouting? Why you shouting? Why you running down the king? Why you giving God the glory? Why you throwing the glory in your head? Why you been running for Jesus? Have been running for a long time? And even though you ain't tired yet, the devil is hard on your trail. I tell you, you might be the one that's still holding on. But the devil is hard on your trail. I tell you, you might be the one that's still holding on. But the devil is hard on your trail. I tell you, you might be the one that's still holding on. But the devil is hard on your trail.
word. You got to know that the enemy come to steal and to kill and to destroy. But that God has come, that Jesus has come, that you might have life and have life more abundantly. You see, look, in order for God to work the type of miracle in your life, then you got to realize that you got to be in the right place for your miracle. So God has led them to the right physical place for their miracle. Because this is where the buck stops. This is where it's all going to come together. This is where the rubber hits the road. God has them in the physical place, but their mind and their spirit have not lined up with what God is doing with the purpose of God. Now God got to get them in the right mind and in the right spirit. Can I tell you, that was all part of the purpose of God for their life. But look, God spoke to Moses in verses 13 and 14. And Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, he shall see them again no more forever. Well, yes, forever. 14 says, The Lord shall pray for you, and he shall hold your peace. You got to understand, the Lord already knew you was a ragtag bunch of folk. The Lord already knew you didn't have what you didn't have it in you yet to be able to go out and fight a battle. There was going to come a time when the Lord will turn you loose. Been biting on your chain, stepping at your chain, trying to get the Lord to let you go out on your own. God said you ain't ready yet. You ain't in the place. Don't you worry. Don't you fret. Because God is going to turn you loose today. God is going to get you up. God is going to get you ready up. Stay put, uh, be steadfast, be unmovable, uh, always abounding in the word of the Lord. Uh, I want you to understand, uh, we got set, set, seal. Uh, we ain't talking about sit down and free. We ain't like that. Uh, God is talking about resting in me. Uh, you got to learn how to be in the right place for your miracle. Uh, you got to learn how to rest in the Lord. That is rest in the Lord. Uh, I don't mean laying down doing nothing, uh, but I mean energizing and recharging. Where you belong, uh, when you learn to stop and trust in the Lord, uh, and I tell you, uh, you are in a place uh, where you can see your miracle. Uh, anybody want to be in a place uh, where you can see your miracle? Uh, you can see it all around uh, you. Are all around you. Uh, come on, somebody. Uh, and I tell you, uh, I ain't got much longer, but let me tell you, uh, when you get to a place uh, where you go, uh, and you don't see a way out to the left, uh, and you don't see a way out to the right, uh, you don't see a way out to the front, and the enemy hard behind you. You need to know that God is getting ready to bless you. from God to make your miracle come to pass. Let's take an inventory. Would you mind taking an inventory with me? As we look at what God has put in place for the miracle for the children of Israel. And we don't want to leave anything out. You got a God. You got our inventory. You got the presence of the Lord. The form of the cloud. The fire by night. You got Moses leading the people. You got the rod of Moses. You got the you got your faith, you got your trust, and you got God's love. That sound like the recipe for a miracle, right? Well, it going to take more than that. But if you got all that going, the only thing happening in your life, you don't need. 
a miracle, you walk in your life and say, watch this now. You may get a miracle, but other stuff that God has put in your way. Because in order for God to make sure that your miracle is going to happen to you, you need some opposition. And look what they had. They had Pharaoh. They had the army. They had the Red Sea. They had all of this. They had the chariots. They had the horses. They had the mountains on one side. They had the strongholds on the other side. They had no way out. They had the opposition they needed in order to be able to get their miracle. And when you got opposition, you got to understand. Just like the Bible said, when other things is coming against you, you can't see no way out. Let all things work together for the good of them that love you. Yeah. 